The concept of a multiverse dates back thousands of years with the earliest recorded examples of such a theory coming from the ancient Greeks. As time went on, the idea became more and more popular, especially in the last century where we developed actual modern science. Just joking. They had great science in the past, just not like quantum science, did they? What was once a niche philosophical theory is now a mainstay of comic books, science fiction, and many other forms of pop culture. And also, real science, maybe. Let's find out. For many people, the concept of a multiverse is not just a fun plot device, but it provides a bit of comfort throughout all of history. Life for the average person its kind of been just a little bit sh**. And it's nice to think that somewhere out there exists a version of you for whom life didn't completely go to sh**. But for that version, there's also another person out there who right now is doing heroin in a gutter somewhere. I mean, maybe you're doing heroin in a gutter right now watching this on your phone, in which case, well, that's that you're you're that version. Congratulations. Marvel's recent movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, features an awful lot of madness, but very little multiverse indeed. Many media portrayals of the multiverse generally focus on universes that are very similar to our own, except for very minor differences. Maybe you could travel to another universe where Germany won World War II, or to another one where you happen to have won the lottery and are living a life of luxury. Yes! Scientists, on the other hand, have much more interesting and varied ideas of what the multiverse could look like. Not that you being a rich lottery winner isn't interesting, you know, it's just interesting for you. For everyone else, it's like, oh my god, who cares? Who cares? Indeed, you could travel to a parallel universe in which the constant of gravitation is a little bit different, leaving you to just float off planet Earth like a ball of helium to be swept away by solar winds and die. You would definitely die. That would not be survivable. Or maybe you could travel to another universe that appears to be exactly like our own universe in every way, except, well, <laughs> oh shit, this universe is made out of antimatter instead of matter, and your body's immediately been annihilated by coming into contact with it, leaving a U shaped crater in the ground and also a massive explosion because antimatter, matter together is a. Well, it's a bad time. And if the multiverse is not real, but it's something that can be traversed, well, what about the space in between universes? <laughs> Did you even think about that? Look, Doctor Strange would tell us that is the home of one of his arch nemeses, Shimagarath, an elder god who somehow only deserved five minutes of screen time as an unnamed lackey in the movie. Okay. Wow. The thing is, scientists have been leaning towards the multiverse being a very real thing in one incarnation or another. Of course, many other scientists think that the first scientist it's absolutely f mental. And that they're just talking about philosophy rather than doing any, you know, actual meaningful research. So, the big question today, who's actually right? Let's answer it. I mean, we're not going to be able to do that. It's a spoiler alert. We, we, this video is not going to solve multiverse theory. If you clicked on it expecting that, you're either dumb or very young. <laughs> Let's carry on. Four levels of multiverses. There are so many different theories on how a multiverse would manifest that physicists Max Tegmark and Brian Green devised a classification system to break these up into four levels. Green went on to describe nine different types of multiverses, but we'll just stick with the main levels. Utilizing this taxonomy of four levels, it is possible for each level to include all previous levels, so more than one of these could exist layered upon one another. The first level is just an extension of our own universe. This theory talks a lot about something called Hubble volumes. Now, for our purposes, we're just going to describe these as the observable universe, because that's a lot easier and I have a small brain. Now, this is not an exact synonym and a Hubble volume is smaller than the observable universe, but for our purposes, let's just say that, you know, it's close enough. Look, in theory, the universe should be infinitely large. Beyond our observable universe is the cosmological horizon, the distance beyond which we will never actually be able to retrieve information due to various properties of general relativity, as well as the belief that the universe is constantly expanding. However, the universe does extend beyond the horizon. Because the universe is believed to be infinitely large, there should be an infinite number of observable universes beyond our observable universe, making multiverse. Now, all of these universes would have the same physical laws and constraints and the configurations of matter in all of these universes should represent all possible configurations. However, because there are infinitely many 
of them, there would eventually be another observable universe that formed in the exact same configuration as our own, and many more that are just extremely similar. So, level one is a multiverse contained within our own universe. It's just totally out of reach for us, as we explained earlier. Look, it's just right there waiting to be found, except the laws of physics don't allow us to find it. We're sorry to disappoint you. Somewhere within our universe, trillions of light years away, there could be a copy of you watching this exact same video on YouTube, but wearing a different pair of socks. And if the universe is infinitely large, that's an absolute certainty, which is kind of mental, isn't it? Now, under the theory that these universes exist, Tegmark estimates that there should be an observable universe inside our infinitely large universe that is identical to our own, roughly 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 115 meters away from us. Now, that number may seem fantastically impossibly large, and it is, but remember that he calculated it in meters, so you can knock off three zeros and the end result would burn into kilometers, which makes it well, absolutely no more manageable whatsoever. Now, level two is very similar to level one, but it contains universes with different physical constants. It's based within our own infinitely large and infinitely expanding universe, but this time there's a little bit of a catch. What if some regions of that space stopped expanding, almost like a bubble trapped in a rising loaf of bread that is our delicious universe, and now I am hungry. Some of those bubbles could experience something called spontaneous symmetry breaking, which would allow them to have different physical laws and constraints. In these bubbles, perhaps the gravitational constant or the speed of light is different. They could even have different parameters for the quark mixing matrix, and I assume that'd be really exciting for scientists because I have absolutely no idea what that is. It sounds like something that quark would make in his bar and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I love this stuff, you can see why I made this channel. Much more exciting is the third level, which is the one you are probably most familiar with. It's what's known as the Many Worlds Theory, and it's based on observations in quantum physics. This theory was first proposed by Hugh Everett III in 1957. And fun fact here that isn't in my script and absolutely blows my mind for whatever reason, Hugh Everett III's son is the dude who sings in the eels, like the Novocaine for the Soul Bands, Amazing. I was like, okay. And they made a documentary. He made a documentary about his dad. It's an hour's long. I think it's on Vimeo. It's cool. And look, this multiverse theory caught on because honestly, it's the sexiest one and it's also the easiest to understand. Yes, don't worry. This video gets more suitable for small brains from here on out. Normally, they get increasingly complex and I'm like, what's going on? No, here we go. Based on what we now know, there are certain observations in quantum physics that cannot be predicted with absolute certainty. Instead, there's a probabilistic model of various possible outcomes, and each of these probabilities occurs in a different universe. And if that wasn't easy for you to understand, think of it like this. Everything that can happen did happen somewhere. So, like I said, somewhere you've won the lottery. Somewhere else you're doing heroin in a gutter. If you randomly deal out a hand of five playing cards, there are a lot of possible outcomes with different probability. In this universe, you may have been dealt a hand with one pair, which is nearly 50-50. 50 odds, but somewhere there's a universe where you will dealt a raw flush, which has uh, it's less likely. While this leads to a lot of nice fantasies, it does have its limit. There is not a universe where Scarlett Johansson accepted your tweet asking her out on a date because that's always had a probability of zero, I'm sorry to tell you. There is also not a universe where you can fly around, turn invisible, and shoot laser beams out of your eyes because, again, that's as unlikely as you going out on a date with Scarlett Johansson. Unless you're Ryan Reynolds and watching. Hi, Ryan. They dated, right? I'm not up on my celebrity thing, but they were, right? Everything that is possible will happen, but that does not mean everything is possible. Finally, that brings us to Layer 4, which is known as the Ultimate Ensemble. Layer 4 is sort of an extremely lazy catch-all that includes any other universe which can be described using mathematical structures, while also assuming any universes that could not somehow be described using math simply cannot be real. Layer 4 is designed to preclude the possibility of any additional layers and is designed as a sort of theory of everything. 
anything. Of course, this is all very, very speculative. There are several proposed theories of everything, such as string theory that attempt to unite and fully explain all physical aspects of the universe. Considering we don't even know whether or not a theory of everything exists in our universe, well, it's a bit bold of Tegmark to propose a theory of everything that extends across multiverses. Maybe. Why does anyone believe this? The theory of a multiverse may be thousands of years old, but why is it only now beginning to gain popularity among actual scientists? Sure, it makes sense from a media and entertainment standpoint, and even as a philosophical thought experiment, pondering the existence and particularly the ability to travel to other universes is very similar to time travel in that it is the ultimate form of wish fulfillment fantasy. Except you can't go to a universe where Scarlett Johansson said yes, sorry. Time travel represents a means to undo any mistakes we've made or relive crucial choices to potentially arrive at a better outcome. The multiverse removes the drudgery of actually having to do any of that sh**. So we can simply travel to a universe where we already made the right decision. Like it's fun to think about how life would be different if you'd been bold enough to order the Eggs Benedict instead of the French toast that one time if we were chosen not to drive drunk and hadn't killed all those pedestrians. But being interesting and fun to think about is not the basis of scientific theory. So how did scientists get involved in all of this instead of just writers, philosophers, and, well, alcoholics. And in a way, don't all of those words describe the same person? Now, the roots of multiverse theory in science stem largely from our inability to explain certain fundamental parts of the standard model of physics and elements of other theories. If there was one universe formed by the Big Bang, how could it be that the result was a universe so perfectly formed to accommodate for our existence? For many scientists, it's easier to believe that it didn't, and there are in fact infinite universes, many of which could not possibly contain life, than it is for them to believe that we just got incredibly ridiculously lucky. Likewise, there are certain elements of quantum mechanics in particular that are so poorly understood and seemingly nonsensical that they almost seem to require the existence of a multiverse to make any coherent sense. Now, regardless of the exact phenomenon being observed that might be best explained by a multiverse, this is all, at best, extremely theoretical. It's really important to note that this is highly, highly contentious among physicists and cosmologists alike. While there are proponents of various multiverse theories, there are more who just don't believe in them. The main difference is that some of those in favor of the theories are the likes of Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson, while those who are much more critical of the concept are all names that you've never heard of before doing science backwards. Sometimes science goes off the rails. A preconceived notion forms, data is found, and that data is a little bit adapted to justify the conclusion. Now, that may sound a bit like experimentation in the scientific method, but it's really not. For one of the most famous examples, let's look at our own solar system in our universe. So for a long time, everyone knew that the Earth was the center of the solar system, and all the planets and the sun revolved around us. This was just a thing that people understood, and that was that. Yes, they go around us. Easy, no one doubts it. So, how did we explain the problem of retrograde motion? If everything orbited the Earth, you'd expect celestial bodies to travel in a straight line across our sky, but, well, they don't. Planets will travel along the skyline, briefly move backwards, and then continue on as we'd expect them to. Now, this didn't make a lot of sense, and everyone was like, it's really hard to explain, isn't it? Instead of looking for other answers, such as that perhaps everything revolved around the sun and the apparent retrograde motion was the result of those planets orbiting the sun in relation to Earth's position around the sun, well, they had a better idea. Introducing epicycles. It was an elegant solution that explained retrograde motion and variance in speed by proposing that the planets orbited Earth in a circle while also traveling in smaller circles around arbitrary points in space that were convenient to prove what the scientists back in the day wanted. Instead of a simple series of ellipses orbiting a central point, the model of the solar system was changed to look more like a f spirograph drawing than anything resembling, you know, 
actual science. In a lot of ways, what is happening now is pretty similar. The concept of a multiverse has existed for millennia, even if only as a philosophical thought experiment. Now, when faced with questions that we don't know how to answer, we use this preconceived notion of a multiverse to explain away things rather than actually, you know, seeking scientific answers. Now, that doesn't mean the multiverse can't be the answer. There's just absolutely no way to prove it. Dangerous for science. So there are some scientists that argue that multiverse theories are dangerous for science for two main reasons. The first is that we can't really even qualify it as a scientific hypothesis. One of the main points of the scientific method is that there must be an ability to try and disprove a theory by means of scientific experimentation. Obviously, that doesn't mean all theories will be disproven, but there needs to be something that would. For example, gravity is a constant that acts equally on all objects regardless of weight. We know already that this is true. But if it wasn't, there would be the ability to disprove it. If you dropped a one ounce rubber ball and a one ton lead ball from the same massive height, it could disprove the theory if they didn't hit the ground at the same time. That wouldn't happen because gravity has been sufficiently proven. But if it had been wrong, there were experiments we could do that would disprove it. There there is no way to disprove the multiverse because the existence of the multiverse would account for all possible results of all experiments. Because it is unfalsifiable, it's hard to give a lot of scientific weight to it. Not only can we not falsify the existence of the multiverse, and even if it was real, there's not even a theoretical way to travel to another universe. Rick and Morty, it's a cartoon, it's not a documentary. So those portal guns with no scientific basis don't count. In this regard, claiming that the currently unexplainable observations in quantum mechanics are the result of multiple universes is no different than claiming they're the result of the various whims of Harry Potter. There's no evidence that they are, but I mean, good luck proving that they're not. But the nature of an unprovable theory is not the only part that could be dangerous to science. Equally dangerous would be to ignore it entirely. This is not dangerous because we are under imminent threat from other universes, but because of people's perception of science. What was once a popular idea for philosophy and storytelling has now been pushed as a possible scientific theory that has enthralled society, if scientists reach a consensus that the whole idea must be hogwash without anything resembling proof, it could damage people's perception of science and their faith in the scientists who are performing science. If they propose such a captivating idea as scientific theory to abandon it entirely without proof of its non-existence, and that could dramatically change how the average person perceives the supposed rigorous nature of science and scientific testing. Wrap up. So look, big question at the beginning. Is there really a multiverse? Big answer. Who the f knows? There's no evidence that it exists. There's no way to test for its existence, and there's no way to travel to other universes. We're sorry. The idea in science is born entirely from a desire for a neat way to explain things that we otherwise can't explain, but that barely makes it even qualify as a theory. Cosmologists generally agree that there is more to the universe than the observable universe. There is almost certainly matter so far off in space that our telescopes will never be able to even see it. But does that mean there are infinite, nearly identical universes with infinite doppelgangers of ourselves running around making YouTube channels? Well, that's a lot harder to believe, isn't it? We can't definitely say that there is not a multiverse, but given that there is no more evidence for its existence than the existence proving the existence of Luke Skywalker or Bilbo Baggins as genuine historical figures, you'll have to forgive us for remaining just a touch skeptical on this one.